Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Spice and this is a complete guide to the DJI Pocket 2. If you've just got your Pocket 2 or you're thinking about getting it and you want to know where everything is straight away, then this is the guide for you. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so we've got the Pocket 2 in front of us here and the first thing I'm going to do is going to turn it on using the power button on the right. And if you do use the power button on the right, it'll automatically turn on into selfie mode. And I've got it set to track my face when it goes into selfie mode, so it should track my face there. And yes, you'll see the iPhone 12 here. This whole section of the video will be filmed with the iPhone 12. If you want to know what software I'm using, then check out my other video on Filmic Pro. So I'm just going to turn that back off again. And I'm going to turn it on this time using the function button. If you turn it on using the function button, it will face forward. So a really easy way to get it to face the way you want it to face, um, went straight from when you're turning it on. So let's get straight into the buttons and let's start with analog stick. So obviously at the, at the moment, the analog stick is moving the zoom. And you can also set it to move the gimbal. To do this, all you have to do is double tap the button next to it. And now it's moving the gimbal. You can move it up, down, left, right, and diagonal. It doesn't work like a traditional analog stick. There is no sort of in-between movements, so it sort of clicks into place. So the button next to the analog stick, you can use it to change the gimbal mode. So if we go into tilt locked, this basically locks the tilt, so it'll be forward or left and right. If you go into FPV, then it basically follows any movement you do. So whether you uh, tilt up, down, pan left and right, or even rotate the gimbal, um, it will still follow those movements. And if you go to follow, that's just left, right, up and down. If you actually hold this button down, it will lock the gimbal. So we can just move it left and right. And as you see, the gimbal will stay in the same position. In theory, when you let go, it should unlock it, but sometimes it does it and sometimes it doesn't. So I just click this button to come out of it. So obviously this button on the left is a record button and then we've got the function button on the right. If you push the function button once, it changes the mode from photo to video. Um, if you push it twice, it will recenter the gimbal. Obviously we're centered already. So if I move the gimbal slightly off, and push the function button twice, then we'll recenter. And if you press it three times, then it will flip over into selfie mode again. Okay, so the way the menus work is the same as a DJI Osmo Pocket, where if you swipe down from a different edge, you'll be greeted with a different menu. So the top edge is the more in-depth settings. The left edge is the preview, where you can see the photos and videos you've taken. The bottom edge is more gimbal-related settings. And the right edge is where you change your mode. So we're going to start with the settings menu at the top. And if I swipe to the left here, this is another way of changing the function of the analog stick. At the moment, it's set to move the gimbal, but if I just tap that, it will change it to change the zoom. So it's another way of doing that. Um, here we have the settings icon. If we just click that, we can change whether we want the screen to be full screen or not. So basically I keep full screen off because then you can view this full 16 by nine image. Um, so let's go back and preview it while it's off. Um, as you can see, there's black bars at the top and bottom, but you can view your full image there. But if you wanted to change that, you could turn full screen on um, and there's no black bars, but you're not viewing the full image that you're recording. So it's up to you whether you want to do that. Um, perhaps it could be useful for focus if you want to get that little bit more zoomed in. Uh, but otherwise, I keep it on full screen off. On the right here, it shows you how much storage you have and you can also format the SD card. On the bottom left, we've got the selfie mode, which basically means that when you turn the camera around, is it automatically going to treat track your face. So as you saw earlier, when I turned the camera around, it automatically started tracking my face. I have this on just because if I'm turning it around, I'm probably wanting to track my face. And on the bottom right, we have accessories, um, where if you did connect something, um, you could change the settings for it. So obviously we've got the control stick connected. So if we click it, we can calibrate the control stick. And we can also change the sensitivity of either the gimbal or the zoom. The problem with the zoom at the moment with the analog stick is it is a bit jerky, um, so I wouldn't recommend using it while you're filming. So I'd always probably stick that up as high as it can go so you get where you want to go as quick as possible. Okay, so going back to the main settings menu, we can then swipe a bit more to the right and we've got the glamour effects. Unfortunately, you can only enable the glamour effects at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So if we go into our mode, and swipe right again on video, 
change it to 1080p at 30 frames per second. We can then go down here and turn the glamour effects on. So if we swipe right, we have the quality and you can change that between battery saver or you can click it again and shoot in high quality mode. It will tell you that it generates excessive heat. Essentially, it just shoots in a higher bit rate, um, which might be better quality for things like moving subjects or uh, nighttime shooting, or if you want to grade it heavily. But obviously the file size is bigger. Um, there seems to be no more noise reduction applied. Um, so some people have complained that it's a little bit too smooth at times, there's not enough detail. Um, but I found the high quality mode is quite good. The only difference is in the high quality mode, you can only shoot in 4K up to 30 frames per second. In battery saver mode, you can shoot in 4K up to 60 frames per second. So if we move over to the right here a bit more, we have the pro settings. So if you turn pro on, if we swipe up, you'll see in the top left, we have that little pro menu. And basically what that enables us to do is click that and get to another menu here. In the top left, we can go to exposure and we can set it auto or we can click the little M and get to manual. Here you can change the shutter speed um, which could always be handy if you wanted to take like long exposure photos, for example, or you just wanted to expose it differently. For a lot of times I use it on auto, but if you're going to get more in depth into it, then you might want to use um, the manual modes. So we also have color in the bottom left and you can have normal color, um, which is essentially just straight out of camera color, or you can have D cine like, which basically flattens the colors um, so that you can add colors later on in editing. Um, and change them how you want. In the top right, we have white balance, which at the moment I've got set to auto. But again, if we set that to manual, you can change it independently. So let's go back to auto, click the pro again. And on the bottom right, we have autofocus modes. So we've either got single or continuous. Continuous will just follow whatever the autofocus point is on. Single, you set the point once and it's gonna be focused at that point the entire time. So if we swipe right here, on the top left, we have the audio channels. So you can go stereo or mono. Um, I'm always leaving it to stereo. On the top right, we have the volume. So you can set it to auto or you can adjust it manually. So you've got the different levels there. I think there's three different levels. I always have it on auto. Um, I haven't actually used any microphones with this yet. So I don't know whether microphones will require different volume lengths, but when I'm using the pocket with just the um, inbuilt microphones, I set it to auto. And you can also change whether you want the noise reduction on or off. On the bottom right, we've got some directional audio settings and basically there are microphones all around the pocket on the front and back. Um, and so you can set to use all those microphones or if you just wanted to use the front microphones, you could just use the back micro front microphones uh, or you can use front and back. And basically this is helpful if maybe you just want to record yourself and you don't want it recording any sound from the back microphones um, because the important sound when you're recording the self is the audio that's coming from you. So let's come out of the pro mode here. Oh, let's change that, come out of the pro mode. So now we're gonna swipe from the left and go into the preview window. So you see this is image one of 61. And if we swipe, we can see various different images. And we'll try and find a video that's actually interesting. Press play. And you can see you can watch your video. Just for reference and purposes, I'd always connect my phone to watch the videos at the end of the day. Um, but if you didn't wanna watch them back, you can do it like that. You can also swipe from the left again, and you can favor it or delete it that way. So next we have swiping from the bottom, um, which essentially just gives us more similar controls to what you can do with the buttons. So we've got the recenter there. We've got the flip there. We've got whether you want it to follow quickly or slowly. So you've got fast follow or slow follow. Um, just basically changes how quickly the gimbal will move to catch up with your movements. There's not actually a huge difference between them, but obviously if you're going for more cinematic footage, you want slow follow, but if you're sh shooting like sports stuff, then you might want fast follow. And of course you have your different gimbal modes, follow modes, which you went through earlier. So if we skip that, you can change it between tilt locked, FPV and follow. So scroll back out of that. Okay, so if we swipe from the right, you'll see it gets interesting. We've got the different photo and video modes, starting with story, which basically allows you to create a short video 
without actually doing any editing. So if you swipe right again, you have the settings within that um, and you can change it between different movements that it'll automatically do for you. Um, and then in theory, it puts them together to create a little video. So the next option is pano. And if we swipe right again, you can see we have a three by three pano, which is where essentially it shoots nine shots in like a little square um, and then stitches them together into like a square pano. This is my favorite to use and I'll probably put a couple of them on the screen. And also here you can change the countdown obviously of uh, between when you press the shutter button and when it takes it. And also you have the standard 180 degree pano, which is just essentially one long image. So let's go back and let's go to photo. And if we swipe, swipe right on photo, then we have different options between uh, aspect ratios. And again, the countdown, if we go into video. So since the update, my touchscreen has definitely been less responsive and I don't know why. So if we go into video, you've got 1080p, 2.7K, 4K, and then the, your different frames per second over here. So I'm in 60 frames per second now. So let's come back out of that. And the new edition, the latest edition is HDR video. So if we scroll, you'll see that you can only go up to 2.7K at 30 frames per second in HDR. Um, but in theory, the dynamic range is a bit better there. Next, we have the slow-mo where you can shoot in a little bit better, um, higher frames per second. This obviously reduces the quality as you can only shoot at 1080p. Um, but you can change how slow you want it to be in the end. So four times or eight times. If you're shooting at like 60 frames per second, that's basically two times. Um, so you don't need that when it comes to slow-mo. So give you four times or eight times. So after slow-mo, if you swipe right, you've got time-lapse. And if you swipe right again, you've got three different modes, time-lapse, motion-lapse, and hyper-lapse. Time-lapse is your usual, just completely still shot. If you swipe right from time-lapse, you can change the interval and the duration. So say I want two seconds, press OK. Um, and that shows me at the bottom there that I'm recording for 10 minutes and I get 10 seconds of footage. And obviously if I do change the intervals to like five seconds, then it'll show I'm recording for 10 minutes and I get four seconds of footage, which is a pretty handy little timer there. Obviously underneath that you've got motion lapse um, where you can actually control the gimbal and make the gimbal move as you're doing the time lapse. So you've got preset options left to right, right to left, or you can set custom motion. Um, you can also, again, change the interval and the duration. Um, so it says here to move your gimbal, so you can move it like that. And then you set, you press plus to set the point. Not sure if that actually did it. And then you've got a second point there. And then you press record. Um, and it gets started on that and it'll basically take then 10 minutes to move from point one to point two and you'll get like a little four second time lapse um, which is pretty handy it's a pretty cool tool next in time lapse we have the hyper lapse this is good for sort of walking time lapse shots um, which i'll probably show on the screen and if we swap to the right in time lapse we have a resolution and a speed so essentially what we're doing here is just speeding up um, the footage to make a hyperlapse. So you can go from times two to times 30. And that's basically the interface on the Pocket 2. I'm now gonna switch over to the phone interface on the DJI Mimo app, just to go through how to access the settings on there. So now we've got the phone connected to the Pocket 2, and I just wanna go through where to find the settings on the phone. So let's start on the top left. We've got the home button that basically just takes you back to the Mimo app home. So if you click that, it goes back to the device. Then we've got our manual settings here, our pro settings. So if we click that, it brings us to auto exposure or we can change the manual exposure. Like before, we can change the shutter speed and the ISO here um, or the exposure compensation at the bottom. Let's change that back to auto. Next, we have the resolution and frames per second. So if we wanted to go to 1080p, we could. 4K, 30 frames per second. Uh, I think we're in time-lapse mode. So if we go to video, mode and now if we click that we've got a few more options in relation to the uh, resolution and the frames per second so we've got 4k up to 60 frames per second at the bottom here we've got battery saver or high quality and you can't actually click high quality until you go down to 30 frames per second um, and it will automatically change the high quality if you had that selected before so if you go back to battery saver and then go to 60 
and then back to 30, it will stay on battery saver. But if you go on high quality, press OK, and then end up clicking 60, it will automatically change back to battery saver, and you go to 30, and it automatically change back to high quality. So that's quite good. So let's come out of that menu, and let's go into the beauty features. So the glamour effects, again, are only available at 1080p at 30 frames. So let's go back to 1080p at 30, and um, and then we can turn the glamour effects on. So let's go custom for now. And I'll show these on the screen, but essentially you can change sort of <laughs> your different glamour effects on your face, basically. So you can make your eyes bigger, uh, you can make your cheeks rosy, you can make yourself skinnier, um, and it really is quite scary when you <laughs> turn them all up to full, as you'll see. So let's turn those off again. And we click the bottom right menu here. And here we have um, a menu that shows whether you want the pro mode turned on. So again, if you turn that off, you won't then be able to change the exposure in the settings here. Um, but if you turn it on, you'll see that you can change the exposure. And if we have it on, you can also change the things like the decently light color profile. So I want to keep it on just because you've got more options here. So if you have it on, then you've got the grid lines as well. Uh, you can have grids and grid diagonals. I'm just going to come out of that to show you what it does, but you can see that there's now a real deferred grid there. So if we turn that off for now. Again, the selfie function. Um, so when you turn the camera around, it automatically starts tracking your face. Now that is available here. The focus, why can't I go down? There you go. The focus mode um, is on continuous at the moment, but then you can change it to single just like that. Then you've got the anti-flicker, which obviously just depends on what region you're in. Um, I'm in the UK, so it's 50 hertz, but if you're in um, America, it's 60 hertz. Then you've got the white balance, which is again set to auto, but you can change it to custom. The color profile, which we just went through, which is basically decently like or normal. Then the audio channels and the volume level, which we went through on the screen. Wind noise reduction is also available here, as well as the direction of audio. So again, if you wanted to just come through the, um, if you wanted to just record audio from the front microphones, if you're doing a talk piece of camera, then you can set it to front. Overexposure alert is quite good actually. Um, and that will basically do these little zebras here, or zebras as we'd call them in the UK, um, when you're overexposed in a certain area. So that is handy, so let's say, uh, I'm going to really struggle to overexpose in here because it's a dark room as it is. But let's say I overexpose, then you'll see there's zebras everywhere telling me I'm massively overexposed. So that's quite handy if you're exposing manually and you do want to um, dial in your exposure to a little bit of a better level. And then again, you've got the histogram as well, which pops up here, but you can then actually move us around wherever you want. So I'm going to turn this off, go to the next menu, and then we've got the gimbal easy control, which you can turn on or off, and auto calibration, but you can actually just calibrate by pressing that button. And then the bottom left, we have general settings, which basically comes to your SD card capacity, formatting it, um, you can go into about, and it'll show your device name and version, and then whether you want the video cache turned on. So let's come back out of that. And now let's switch over to um, photo mode, for example. And I'm gonna change the settings back to auto. And you see now we're in photo mode, we've got some different settings down here. Um, so we can choose the megapixels, 64 or 16 megapixels are available in the pocket too. Um, and the aspect ratio as well. And then the next menu, you can set the timer and then in the bottom menu, on the top tab, you will have slightly different settings. So at the bottom, you just have that photo format where you can select whether you want it in RAW or JPEG. So I just want to go through some more settings that are on the screen. So on the left here, we have a little zoom rocker. So if you press that, hold it, and move up, you can zoom up in, move down to zoom out. Just a really quick way to zoom. And then on the top right here, we have story mode. 
which is easily accessible. So you can just pick the story that you want to create um, and then press start and it will guide you on how to create it. So you've also got the flip camera. So again, that comes straight back over and then you can flip it again. The recenter button, which if I try and make it off center, so you've got a little um, sort of digital analog stick here to move the gimbal around if you wanted to, and then you can press recenter to get it back to the center. Obviously the record button there in the middle. Here we've got like different gimbal modes as I mentioned before. Um, it might seem a bit confusing at first, but if you do click the gimbal mode, it will change it just like that. And you've got slow follow or fast follow. So let's come back out of that. And then you've got the preview, which is much better and much easier to do on the phone. So let's go and find one of our videos and then just play that. Oops. And here you can also download it, favorite it, or delete it as well. So let's come back out of that. So let's change the mode again and see what different settings it offers us. So straight up, if we go to Pano, it changes to 180. And here, over here we can change between the 180 mode and the three by three mode. And you can also, again, set the uh, timer here as well. And in this menu, you obviously have a lot less settings, but you can enable Pro here. Um, and again, you can then set the exposure based on that. Again, for panos, I like to leave it on auto because it's weird, even though I'd never shoot auto on a pro camera on the pocket, I just leave everything on the auto because of the things I'm filming generally. You can also scroll down to story mode, which is again, the same thing as clicking that button and live stream, which also requires the use of the do it all handle. So I can't actually show you that right now. And if we scroll over to HDR video, there's a lot less options in terms of your resolutions and frame rate. We can only go up to 2.7K at 30 frames per second. So if I scroll down then to slow motion here, then you'll see it says slow four times. And I'm assuming you're meant to be able to change this by clicking this menu button here, but it actually doesn't work for me um, because you're supposed to be able to change it to eight times. Um, but that's just what it is. It doesn't actually change it. Um, it's not available in these settings either. So you're stuck at four times um, I guess you could change it in the actual pocket itself. If we scroll up to time lapse, then you'll see the screen will change again. And again, we've got resolutions over here, but I can't actually change them. Um, I don't know whether I'm being silly here. I'm going to have to look at some of the forums. Um, but if you do know how to change that, or whether it's just a glitch, then let me know. But in time lapse here, we have the duration, the interval, and the time lapse mode. You can obviously set little uh, waypoints. So if you wanted to go left to right, right to left or a custom motion. You can then actually move the gimbal to where you want it to start, press the plus, then move the gimbal to where you want it to finish and press the plus. Um, and then the duration is basically how long it's gonna to take to get from point one to point B and interval is how many, uh, how long between photos. So let's come back out of that. Um, and then it will show you at the top so we've got 10 minutes um, at intervals of two seconds. So basically that shows you at the top, we're recording for 10 minutes um, and then we'll get 10 seconds footage out of it. Hyperlapse, we have the resolution and frames here. So it's going to 4K. And under that is how fast you want it to go. So you can speed it up by up to 30 times. So that was a complete guide to the DJI Pocket 2. Hopefully it's been helpful and now you can get straight into it without having to go through settings to find out where everything is. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.